What is going on everybody and welcome back to Tech Cubed. and today we are going to be checking out a little bit of a different operating system. Today we are going to be checking out a Linux distribution called Zorn OS. Now what's interesting about Zorn OS is I have actually used it before a very long time ago, like multiple years ago. In fact, um, this was one of the first uh, Linux distributions I tested, um, you know, after like the basics like Ubuntu and stuff like that. Because, you know, Ubuntu and like Linux Mint are the first things people usually, the other first Linux distributions people usually use. Um, however, I found it to be very enjoyable, but it's been a long time and it's come very far. So today we are going to be checking it out once again. Um, apparently it's like got new versions and everything like that now. And, um, yeah, so we're going to be checking it out. I have a web page open right here that kind of walks us through Zorn OS and all the different things. Um, so if we come down right here, um, then as we can see, um, it's got, it's rocks on reliable, resistant to viruses. Um, it can speed on, o o on old computers and new, um, and I guess has power to do anything. It's pretty good, um, oh, and your data belongs to you, so it has good privacy and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited to test this out because it's com almost completely new to be honest since last time I tested it. In fact, I tested it last time on like a Mac. So of course it ran pretty badly. So, um, yeah, it's just pretty good right here. In fact, um, you can check out like the YouTube video and whatnot. So, um, we're going to be looking at some of the uh, different versions. So if we come download, um, they have an ultimate version right here. Um, so unleash your computer at the best. Uh, business and media apps, uh, Mac OS, Linux, um, Windows, and touch desktop layouts. Over 20 games included, which is pretty cool. And includes Ultimate Light Edition for old and uh, low spec PCs. So that's pretty good. So this is like the ultimate version, while well, I guess it's in the name. Um, but yeah, uh, there's different versions too. So I've come to here, we got Core, which is like your basic um, version. It's kind of like Windows 10 Home, where it's like the basic version. So, I um, mean, like the core essentials, so Windows and Touch Desktop layouts only. Uh, LibreOffice, which is one of my more favorite, uh, like, open office type suite things, um, and useful accessories and utilities. And as well, it has a light version as well. So, like, your old computer new again. So, that's what I was talking about earlier. So, you can, like, run it on old computers. In fact, this is so old, it looks like it has a CRT. Um, but anyway. Um, yeah, it runs fast on computers as old as 15 years, so that's like Windows XP um, days. So yeah, that would be pretty cool if you have like an old XP computer, but you don't want to kind of retire it at that point. So, um, and then it has like a um, education version, which you know is very very particular market um, for like school and stuff like that. So um, we'll come back to Ultimate, um, and now this is the version maybe testing out today. Um, now I had this on my computer um, in my ISOs for a while because um, I wanted to test it out but I really never got the time to do it so we're going to be doing that today and I'm pretty excited to test it out. So you are of course going to need a couple things so if we move this over here um, you are going to want the Zorin OS uh, ISO of course this is the ultimate version. Now um, yeah, you're gonna want this. Now, it is, um, I think it is like 40 bucks or something like that. However, in my opinion, it is well worth it because you get to support the developers and it's a pretty cool operating system. So, um, you can test out the core versions and the light version because this, because uh, those are like the same installation process. So, um, and of course, there is going to be one more thing you want, which I'm sure you've already guessed, but it is VirtualBox. This is what we're going to be installing the virtual machine to. Um, so I guess without further ado, uh, we can get started. So I'm going to go for new. I'm going to set my custom machine folder. I'm going to call it uh, Zornin OS. So yeah, Zorn OS, and um, it says Linux Oracle 64-bit. Um, we'll set that. Um, now keep in mind I am using guided mode. This isn't really a tutorial, but a more of a look at Zorn OS per se. So like you kind of look at this and see like, oh, is this you know what I want to install like my old computer or something like that? So that's kind of what the video is for. I mean, it can easily be used as a tutorial, but it isn't really dedicated to that. Um, anyway, um, we can set it to a bunch of different stuff. Um, we'll just set it to other Linux 64-bit because yeah, that's that should do. Um, you can set it to uh, I I don't think this would really, this doesn't really matter that much. Um, so in fact we can set it to uh, Turbo Linux. In fact, for fun we'll set it to Turbo Linux. It doesn't really matter that much, like I said. Um, as long as it's like a 64-bit version. So yes, Turbo Linux 64-bit doesn't really matter. But you know, like the icons for like the versions are cool and stuff. 
Um, yeah, so that much, 384 megs of RAM, nah, is not good. Um, now we'll go for a, a amount of RAM that is very good for a machine like this. What we will do is we will set it to, um, 8 gigs of RAM. Now that will do, yeah, that's great for a machine like this. Um, it's just a really good all-around uh, for a lot of Linux distros, and my computer has a pretty decent amount of memory, so we'll be able to support it easily. And now, of course, you can downgrade to like 4 gigs, and I guess you can even downgrade to 2 gigs. However, 8 gigs, really good amount. It'll serve us well. Um, so now, we'll create virtual hard disk now. Uh, we will do that. We will create. Uh, now we will set it to dynamically allocated VDI VirtualBox disk image. Uh, file size, I think we will go for uh, 64 gigabytes. That is a really good amount, um, especially since, in fact, actually, I think we'll set it to 128, to be honest, um, because we got, like, the ultimate version. And um, I think, if I remember correctly, Zorin OS, you needed a decent amount of storage to do that, especially if you got, like, the ultimate version. So, yeah, 128, that, that'll do. Um, and then, the, yeah, the VDI dynamically allocate, that's good. Um, now we can go into the settings, and now I'll come down to system processors, as per usual, I like to upgrade it, and now here I think 2 will do us pretty well, um, 4 I guess would be okay, um, but 2 will do pretty well in my opinion. Um, display video memory, we will upgrade that as far as it'll go, because I get a pretty dec decent amount of video memory on my video card, um, because I have an RTX video card, however, um, it doesn't really, well, you know, it doesn't matter a decent amount, so I would just put that as high as you can go, to be honest. Um, and then storage, of course, now we gotta do something with that ISO. Um, so click on the empty, and then choose a disk file, and then that ISO we have uh, for uh, Zorn OS, we will put that in there, and then click OK. And now it looks like we are ready to start up, and now I'm gonna rearrange my virtual machines a little bit, like I'm gonna put those like that. So there we go, Zorn OS, we are ready to start it up. Now it'll take a couple seconds depending on uh, your machine. And it sees our startup here. Now it just says select startup disk, but we already put in the startup disk, so we can just click X out of there when we did the ISO and the storage thing. Um, so we can put it up here like that. And now it is doing pretty good. So I will capture it. Um, now it has the um, automatic boot, so I recommend you come in here before that. Now usually, um, what you would do is if you're selling something on your main computer, if you got an NVIDIA video card, you would do a modern NVIDIA driver, um, safe graphics, um, you, uh, odds are you don't want to do safe graphics, um, it's for very particular situations, um, however, I do have NVIDIA graphics, of course, um, because I have an RTX, uh, graphics card, but, um, we are doing a virtual machine, so odds are what you're gonna want to do is try and install Zorn OS, now, if you're doing this on your main computer and you got an NVIDIA card, um, of course you're going to want to do modern NVIDIA drivers. Um, Safe graphics is for very particular situations. Um, but yeah, try and install Zorn OS. That's most likely what we're going to do. So use the arrow keys, of course, to come up here and then press enter. And now we will boot to the installer of Zorn OS um, right here. So um, in a couple seconds, it'll greet us and like ask us like where do we want to install it and whatnot. So... Um, yeah, see it's already loading right here, so install, um, now try Zorn OS, now you can try Zorn OS, like, or at least you can click on that, it'll give you like this little live CD thing where you can kind of experiment or, um, just kind of test out like some of the simpler things of Zorn OS, um, now I wouldn't really recommend we're doing that, especially since we're on a virtual machine, maybe if you had it like on a USB sort of thing, um, like a bootable disk or whatever, and you put it in your computer and you like test it out on your machine, see how well it runs and stuff like that, that might be good. Um, however, we're in virtual machines, so there's no reason to click try. So we're just gonna click install Zorn OS. Um, so English, English, that should do good um, for me. Um, however, you can set it to whatever you want. Um, continue. And um, normal installation, that'll do good. And then download updates while installing Zorn OS. I will do that. Um, install third party software for graphics, Wi Fi, hardware, and digital media formats. Um, now we're doing like some, um, of like a virtual ethernet thing connected to, um, virtual box. So we don't really need a lot of the Wi-Fi stuff. Um, now of course if you're like doing this like a laptop or something that has like a Wi-Fi card, um, 
then you're going to want to do that. However, um, we're doing like a virtual Ethernet thing for VirtualBox. Even if you have like, you're using Wi-Fi on your main host PC, it's still going to seem like a um, Ethernet um, because you're on VirtualBox and it simulates like sort of a Ethernet uh, thing. Um, so yeah, normal installation, we'll do that and I will click these two options, up to you. But uh, I will do it um, because why not? It gets you all your updates and stuff like that going. And of course, it's important to have your updates. Um, so yeah, we'll click continue and erase this solves Warren OS and it says Warren to delete our programs, documents, photos, music, any our files, and any, um, in all operating systems. Now, um, keep in mind, of course, we're a virtual machine, so all of our stuff won't be deleted. Now, if someone is on a main machine, then, um, it would be different, but we will, are just installing it into a virtual machine. So it says that it'll delete all stuff. It really won't. Um, so we're okay. So we can click, click install now. And then right changes to disk, we are okay. So we can just click continue. Um, and then um, it seems like um, it'll ask us where we are. So I'll just click Los Angeles. Um, and then it'll have us asking like um, our name. So I will just click um, the channel name. Um, so Tech Cubed, um, Tech VirtualBox, because it knows we're like in VirtualBox. Uh, no, we won't do Tech VirtualBox. We'll do Tech Cubed. Uh, pick a username. I'll just do uh, the usual. Um, oh, I guess it needs to start with a lowercase. Um, okay, so I guess we'll just do a tech cube then. A password, we don't need a password. We'll just log in automatically. We don't need a password. Um, I guess it makes us put in a password, so we'll just do space. Um, because I don't really need passwords on this sort of thing. Um, yeah, I don't need passwords. Um, to be honest, insights, like, you can just encrypt the disk and stuff like that outside of, uh, um, the virtual machine, like, using VirtualBox, so there's not much reason to have a password on here if you're doing a virtual machine. Of course, when you're selling it to main machine, it's different, because a lot of the stuff is different here when you're selling it on your, uh, main machine, because you need to take different precautions and stuff like that. However, um, we're just going to do a virtual machine, so I just put space. Um, yeah, right, so space, and space. Um, so continue, and now the real installation process will begin. Now, it may take some time, but I will be right back when it finishes. Okay, everybody, we're back in the installation for Zone OS finally completed. Um, it didn't take that long. However, we are ready to restart in order to use our new installation. However, what we are actually going to want to do is turn off our virtual machine, power it off, uh, that is. Um, and then we are going to want to come to Settings and then go to Storage. And we are going to want to remove this from the virtual drive. Click OK. And now we can restart it. Now we will reboot into our virtual um, disk, which has our operating system. So um, right here, if we look, um, it seems like it's working. Um, yeah, so it seems like it's working. That is pretty exciting. So we have to wait for it to start up now. Um, I will kind of move this back and forth, um, like that. Okay, so that is looking pretty good. Um, I'm trying not to get it to where there's like those annoying little bars, um, right there, obviously. Okay, everybody, so it just logged us in, and it seems like it's already working. Um, it's running pretty well on here, of course, because we're I'm working with pretty good hardware. Um, so of course, as we always do, the first order of business is going to get it to run. Um, in a uh, full screen, of course. So we're going to go to view, full screen mode, switch. Um, okay, so that wasn't enough to make it switch. Okay, so um, go to settings. Because I've had some Linux distributions where it's automatically went. Um, so yeah, that that's fine because I got some different methods we can try. Um, so we're going to want to come over to, I'm trying to look for it. Um, appearance, is it appearance? Um, I'm not sure. Um, I'm just going to look at, like, display stuff. Um, yeah, so there we go. And, yeah, so 800 by 600 is not what we want. Um, so it doesn't look like it's in here. There's 1920 by 1200. Um, 1920 by 1440. Um, I'm not looking for either of those. Um, yeah, I can't find it. What Does this work? That's That gets it better. Um, what we're going to, uh, is, th is this it? That does, um, it's not right still, 1920 by 1200. Um, that's a little big in my experience. Yeah, so I can't even, like, see stuff. 
Um, okay, so it's like the information and stuff. So I can that out. But I can still use the, um, uh, what's it say, Windows Start Menu key on my keyboard to access that. Um, yeah, I always have issue with this, trying to get it to work. Um, so we'll try something else. Um, we'll exit out of here. And then we will go to Devices, Insert Guest Edition CD Image. And now, okay, so we can run this and our password, which was space, um, and it will run through this because um, that'll get us to full screen. At least it has on a lot of other virtual machines. Um, now, in my experience, this is one of the reasons where um, VMware is better because it has like a feature where you can like kind of stretch it to fit the screen. So if you got like a resolution that's slightly smaller, then you can like enable uh, the feature on VMware and it'll still look great. Um, compared to VirtualBox to where on VirtualBox, it's just, it, it you kind of got to work with what you got. Um, certain situations where it try, tries to force me to run in a um, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, and I don't want to do that. Um, I'll try and look in settings, I'll see if I can find anything else. Because all of these seem to be 16 by 10, 4 by 3, 5 by 4. Um, none of these are what I want, to be honest, because I have a 16 by 9 monitor. And odds are, um, you do too, to be honest, Um, you, because uh, that's really the standard these days. Um, because 16 by 9 is like 720p all the way up to like 8k, Um, to be honest. So yeah, it's, that's really like the standard. Um, Okay, so it looks like it's done. So press return. And now we will uh, go into here, and um, it won't let me. Um, so we power off and then restart, though. So we'll see if that works. Okay, so it looks like it worked. All right, so that is really good. So we'll go to settings, um, and we will... Okay, so look at that. It ran perfectly. Now keep in mind, um, I said this before, I'll say it again. Um, I, my monitors that I'm recording on are 4K, however, I use 16, um, 9, well, not 16 by 9, that's the aspect ratio, um, but I use 920 by 10 to record my videos, even though my main monitors run in, um, 4K natively, I still like to use 920 by 10 for my videos, um, but yeah, so it's running perfectly, like I said, hit or miss situation, looks like it did good this time, so now we can finally use Zorn OS, um, for what it's meant to be used for, um, so we can check this now, we don't need it, um, so, uh, let's see, documents, downloads, we got nothing in here, um, but we will check as many applications, so, like, um, let's go into games and see what there is in here, I'm kind of excited for that, um, I want to close out, uh, there's a bunch of information right there, uh, back to games, um, let's see, what does it have in here, um, it has a bunch of games I've never heard of before, oh, what has open TTD, that's good, that, that's actually, that's actually pretty cool, and I can sort of hear, like, the little sounds, um, I might be able to make it louder, though. Yeah, so it's pretty cool though. Um, it's kind of like just cutting out or something. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, you can sort of play Open TTD and stuff on here. Um, can game options? Can I make it shut up? Um, oh, so it has like bass music set. Yeah, so no music, um, no sounds because it seems like it's cutting out. Um, I actually really like this game though. So that's pretty cool how it actually works. Okay, so it keeps going. Okay, but it seems to be working better this time, not cutting out. Um, so we'll try like a, a simple game. I uh, will just do like the basic settings. Um. We'll actually try and go settings and make it uh, larger, to be honest. Um, full screen? Did that want to cooperate? And, and, um, I think it seems like it's doing something. I hope it's working, that is. Um, it's sort of working. Okay, that's weird, okay. Um, okay, okay, it seems like... I hope it didn't crash the whole operating system. Um, that's unfortunate. It doesn't seem like it's working. Um, so I think we might have to restart the virtual machine. Um, that's that sucks. <laughs> okay, we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back and we just rebooted the operating system and you know because OpenTTD kind of ruined it for me. Um, but yeah, it seems to be working now and we're back. Um, when I booted up the operating system, though, it was still running in a 19 by uh, 10 aspect ratio. In fact, not 19 by 10, a uh, 16 by uh, 10 aspect ratio, and I had to change that. But it's but it's fixed now, and um, we can kind of go in here and see some of the other stuff, uh, sound and video. Um, so it has Audacity, which is good for recording audio. It has a bunch of other stuff too. Um, VLC Media Player. Um, uh, OBS. That's really good. Um, what else does it have? Um. 
So it has a video recorder though. Does it have like a video editor? So does it have like um I'm not sure what type of video editors would be on here to be honest. Um it has the green recorder and stuff like that. Um yeah, I don't know. Wait, is this like a video editor? Um I've never heard of it, um, to be honest. I expected something like Shotcut to be on here if there was a video editor. Um, but there's this. Um Oh no, but this actually seems like a pretty decent little video editor. Um, it's called, uh, PitTV or something like that? Um, I'm not sure. Um, PitTV or something? I don't know. <laughs> um, we'll close that out because we don't need it. But that's pretty cool. It has a little video editor. Um, so let's take out some of the graphics stuff. Oh, it has some Blender built in. Yeah, I guess the Ultimate version is really good. Oh, it has Krita built in. Um, and it has, like, a shot. Well, what's that? Is that, like, um, what I was thinking of? Um,. Oh no, it's like a, a photo type thing. Um, okay, what about system tools? Um, so, oh, oh, it has virtual box? It does? It has virtual box? Oh, but this seems like a very old version of virtual box. Okay, let's go to like the about section. Wait, let me go see. Um, about virtual box, there we go. Um, oh, this is virtual box 5. <laughs> That's not good. But yeah, that was a very old version of virtual box. Um, anyway, let's check out some of the other stuff, the utilities, um, the image viewer and stuff. Um, there's a lot of the stuff in here that's pretty cool. A key pass, um, a journal something, journal plus plus, um, to do, text editor, maps. Um, that's really good. They have a lot of stuff in here, to be honest. Um, let's go into uh, some of the other things here. What about internet? What's well, Firefox? That's pretty cool. Let's test out Firefox and see what that's like. Okay. Uh, Alright, that's pretty interesting. So it seems like it's using VirtualBox. Um, not VirtualBox, <laughs> Firefox. Um, but I think it's an older version of Firefox, though. But we can still kind of go, like, um, to uh, Google.com. So let's see. Um, okay, yeah. Um, and that's pretty surprising as well, because usually vir the virtual machines are a bit slower to process web pages. It was still slower than usual right there, but it seemed faster than a lot of the other things. So let's go to YouTube. Oh yeah, it's a little bit slower than if I was doing this on my main computer, but it's put some of these websites on here. Um, I've gone on these and they've taken forever to load. Um, so yeah, the fact that it's going is just pretty good in general. Um, but I think um, I will end this video here. Um, I, this is a really good video um, because you know if you want to like install Zorn OS. Um, on like your main machine or something, then this is a pretty good video um, to like kind of look around here because they got a lot of stuff in here, including like some of the office stuff, like a LibreOffice and stuff like that, which is really good. Um, LibreOffice is my um like favorite free office uh, type thing. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool that I have all that built in. Um, but anyway, um, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, tell me if you want to, um, see like a specific type of operating system in, in a virtual box or something like that or whatever, cause I can do VMware as well, uh, in the comments or something. Um, but anyway, um, I will see you all in the next video, Tech Cubed, over and out.